Hello and thanks for joining us from our studios in Tel Aviv. Coming up in today's newscast, Israel finally hunts down the Tel Aviv terrorist. The U.S. condemns Israeli settlement expansion and the Israeli Prime Minister works to develop the Arab-Israeli sector. I'm Natasha Kirchak here with the latest news in Israel. Israel breathed a collective sigh of relief this weekend following the discovery and assassination of the fugitive terrorist Nishat Milhem. Milhem was on the run after murdering three Israelis in a shooting attack in Tel Aviv on January 1st. On Friday afternoon, the fugitive was finally found and shot dead in a gun battle with security forces in his home village of Arara. <laughs> Israeli Public Security Minister Gilad Erdan says Milham acted alone when he opened fire on patrons of a bar on Dizengoff Street. But Erdan claims Milham received assistance in hiding from the police. Five people are currently being held for questioning. Milhem is not a member of the Islamic State or Hamas, but he has been identified as a terrorist who acted with nationalistic motives. Israeli security have come under severe criticism for taking eight days to catch the fugitive, even though he was hiding in his home village. Yet the Israeli Prime Minister says Israelis should be thankful and appreciative. In Israel, I'm Israel has returned the bodies of six Palestinian attackers to the West Bank all of whom were killed while attempting to stab IDF soldiers over the weekend. Thousands of West Bank Palestinians took part in mass funeral processions for the six attempted terrorists. Three of the Palestinians were killed on Thursday afternoon when they tried to stab soldiers at Gush Etzion Junction. One Palestinian was killed at a checkpoint near Hebron and two others were shot dead near Jenin after trying to stab soldiers. No security forces were seriously injured in the attacks. Meanwhile, Israeli forces demolished the home of Palestinian terrorist Mohammed Halabi near Ramallah. Halabi stabbed and killed two Israelis in Jerusalem's old city on October 3rd before being shot dead by police. Clashes erupted during the destruction of his home. The U.S. State Department is condemning Israel's reported plan to expand the Gush Etzion settlement block. And spokesman John Kirby says the expansion will hinder attempts to broker a peace agreement between Israel and the Palestinians. We are deeply concerned about the, the Minister of Defense's decision to expand the existing settlement boundary uh, of the Kush Etzion Regional Council to include a former church compound, which effectively creates a new settlement on 10 acres <laughs> in the West Bank. It's important to note that some 70% of the West Bank's Area C uh, has already been unilaterally designated um, as Israeli state land or within the boundaries of these regional settlement councils. The new decision only expands this significant majority of the West Bank that has already been claimed for exclusive Israeli use. Along with the regular retroactive legalization of unauthorized outposts and construction of infrastructure in remote settlements, Actions such as this decision clearly undermine the possibility of a two-state solution. Defense Minister Moshe Alon has reportedly approved the expansion of the settlement block and the creation of a new Jewish community. The 10-acre site is located between Gush Etzion and Hebron and formerly housed a Christian-run hospital. If populated, the outpost will help create an Israeli corridor from Jerusalem to Hebron. Critics say this will further complicate chances for a two-state solution 
Settlements are legal according to Israeli law, but are viewed as illegal by the international community, including the United States. And Samir, as you know, our longstanding position on settlement activity is clear and has not changed. We view it as illegitimate and counterproductive to the cause of peace. Continued settlement activity and expansion raises honest questions about Israel's long-term intentions and will only make achieving a two-state solution that much more difficult. As we've repeatedly made clear, we continue to look at both sides to demonstrate with actions and policies a genuine commitment to a two-state solution and actions such as yesterday's decision, we believe, does just the opposite. The Etzion bloc existed before the establishment of the State of Israel. The Jewish villages were overrun by the Arab Legion during the War of Independence. Israel recaptured and resettled the Etzion bloc after the Six-Day War in 1967. It's currently home to some 70,000 Israelis living in 22 Jewish communities. Oded Forer is an Israeli politician and he is a new member of the Knesset for the Israel Beteinu Party. Thanks for joining us. Hi, thank you. So this weekend, Israeli security forces finally captured the Tel Aviv terrorist. Uh, there's been a lot of negative backlash from the Israeli community because it took so long to find him. Is it fair for the public to be criticizing Israeli security for the process that they went through in, in, in catching him? First of all, I think it's fair. It's okay for the Israeli society to criticize uh, her armed forces. And I think it's important that we are asking the questions. But I think in, this day, in these days, or maybe today, after uh, we've captured the terrorist, it's uh, good also to say a good word for the police, for the Israeli uh, defense forces, and for the all armed force, forces of Israel uh, for doing a good job. It's not easy to find a terrorist in all the, those villages and to find him and just to pull him out of there. And I think it's important that the terrorists will know that they have one destiny, and that destiny is in the highway to hell. So the terrorist was found in his home village uh, in the north. It's an Israeli Arab town, um, and he was allegedly helped by residents of that town. Um, is this going to worsen relationships between Jewish and Arab Israelis? Unfortunately, I think that the relationship between the Jewish and the Arab Israelis uh, are not so well. And I think uh, the Arab leadership is to blame in, in this situation because, uh, you know, it's okay to say we want equal rights, but we need also equal uh, obligations and equal uh, duties. And I think that what we need to do now is to find a new path, a new way between uh, Arab and Jewish relationships in Israel, I think that they need to know, they need to serve, they need to be a part of the society, to do the obligation of uh, as every citizen in the society, and to be loyal to Israel as a Jewish and democratic state, and then they will also get all the rights as an Israeli citizen. But you can't all the time say, I want this right, I want this and I want that, and I don't want to do anything that every Israeli citizen is doing. So this is a question, what role should the government be playing in addressing this issue? I think that the government needs to uh, be more specific and to be uh, more hard with people that are violating the law. And you need to understand, in the Arab villages, the law is like it's, it's a, it's a, they are recommending on the law. But the law is not a recommend uh, thing to do. The law is something that you need to do. They need to respect the law. We need to collect all the arm uh, that we have in the villages, that the Arab are holding in the hometown, in the homes in the villages. And uh, I think also they need to serve. They need to serve in the Israeli national uh, service and they need to be a part of the society. Then the, we can talk also about the equal rights. So let's change topics for a little bit. You were formerly the Director General of the Ministry of Immigrant Absorption. Yes. And, you know, we've seen a lot of complaints, especially coming from the French government, in regards to the fact that many immigrants come here and they're not recognized professionally. For example, doctors and lawyers who have been practicing for years come here and then they have to take testing uh, that they haven't studied for for a very long time. <laughs> so it makes it harder for them to work. So I understand that you've been working uh, in the Knesset to kind of change this policy. Yes. First of all, we have a good problem now. We have more newcomers for France than we ever had. Uh, and uh, if I look approximately in the last uh, 10 years, every year we, there were newcomers for France, uh, about 2,000 uh, people. Last year, in 2014, we had 7,000 newcomers for France. In uh, 2015, I think about 8,000. Uh, they don't know yet because they're just checking the numbers. But uh, you can see that we have much more newcomers, new Olim uh, from France. And I think the State of Israel needs to do something about it. We, when the, it's such a big number, we need to help them to get a job and a good job like they had before, like they had in France. And I also need to um, 
send a me message to the Jews in France, you have a place to come. I don't want you, if you are living in France, to go to other places, because some of them went. Some of them went to, to Canada or to United States or to England. I want them to come to Israel. But for that, I need to help them to get a job like they had in uh, France. And for, from my point of view, a dentist in Paris can be a dentist in Jerusalem. And a doctor in uh, Nice can be a doctor in Tel Aviv. So there is no difference. And now I'm, I'm, uh, I have a legislation uh, that I'm uh, promoting now uh, that, would, that would allow people uh, to use their diplomas in the EU. If the EU is rec uh, recognized this diploma, Israel should recognize it also. I wish that this kind of policy existed before and because I know my grandparents came here and uh, my grandfather worked as a judge and he, he really had trouble finding work here because he couldn't transfer his credit. So. I, I think that in, in law it's a bit different because you can take a lawyer from France and, and uh, bring him to Israel and say, okay, now you're a lawyer in, a lawyer right, in Israel. You need so to, to learn the Israeli law. And, and for that, we have courses and we have uh, help that the government gives to people so they can change the country and the, to adopt the license like they had in France to have it in uh, Israel. But when I look at a dentist or a doctor, it's just yeah. the same. It doesn't need to, to, to study anything. The same uh, teeth in uh, France are the same teeth in Israel. And if I had a bad tooth and I, when I was in a visit in Paris, I went to a dentist there, there he can be a dentist here in Tel Aviv or in uh, Jerusalem. So I guess the bottom line is just making the process easier overall. It's very important now, especially when you look at the, what's happening now in all Europe and especially in France. And I think that the Jews need to know they have a place in Israel. They can come to Israel, they can be newcomers, they can uh, do Aliyah, as we say to, to Israel. And uh, we would help them to get the same job as they had before in their homeland. Great. Well, thank you so much for coming in. And, thank you. Uh, Hoping to hear what happens in the future with this I policy. I hope that we'll see much more uh, newcomers next year. Absolutely. Last night, France paid homage to the four Jewish hostages killed by an Islamist terrorist last year. Thousands gathered outside the kosher supermarket in Paris where the victims were held. Tributes were also paid to a young French policewoman who was killed by the gunman in the supermarket siege. The terrorist Amadi Koulibaly was shot dead by police after taking hostages in the grocery store. The attack came after the deadly jihadist massacre on the offices of the satirical weekly Charlie Hebdo. Jewish leaders, government officials and local residents gathered to remember the victims and condemn terror. Nous espérons que le gouvernement va continuer à mettre en place tout ce qui est dans son pouvoir pour l'outil contre l'islamisme et la menace terroriste qui pèse sur notre pays et nous allons nous également en tant que membres de la société civile mener le combat contre la radicalisation et contre l'islamisme qui touche des jeunes françaises des français qui se radicalisent et et qui en viennent à connaître à commettre des actes aussi ignobles que ceux qui se sont produits ici il y a tout pile un an. Et ce genre d'événement se se passe encore et encore et encore et, et finalement c'est au cœur de notre actualité. Donc on n'oublie pas, évidemment, euh, on est à chaque fois fragilisé parce que euh, ce genre d'événement finit par euh, se répéter et donc c'est difficile. Donc on est fragilisé. D'un autre côté, euh, en même temps qu'on est fragilisé et que ça nous traumatise, euh, ben, finalement on est quand même plus fort et on, on s'organise pour euh, ne pas laisser euh, le terrorisme gagner et, et prendre notre morale et euh, voilà. During the ceremony, French Prime Minister Manuel Valls addressed the Jewish community. Valls lamented the growing number of French Jews leaving France to move to Israel. Comment la France pourrait-elle laisser ses compatriotes juifs vivre dans la peur, douter un seul instant que c'est ici chez eux, voir des Français juifs quitter de plus en plus nombreux leur pays parce qu'ils ne se sentent plus en sécurité, mais aussi parce qu'ils ne se sentent plus compris, parce qu'ils ne se sentent plus à leur place, aurait dû être depuis longtemps, pour nous tous Français, une idée insupportable. The Israeli Prime Minister says the government is determined to close the gaps between Israel's Jewish and Arab communities. Netanyahu told the cabinet today that the government will allocate more resources to the Arab sector. His comments come after cabinet approval of a 15 billion shekel plan for the development of Arab-Israeli communities. Netanyahu also recently approved a 2 billion shekel development plan for the nation's Druze and Circassian communities. Call me Shainav Berosho. You know that there are big gaps between the Arab community and the Jewish community. 
פערים במשאבים ופערים באכיפת החוק. פערים בזכויות ופערים בחובות. הפערים הללו נוצרו במהלך עשרות שנים, והגיע הזמן לעשות מאמץ לאומי גדול לצמצם אותם. בשנים האחרונות הממשלות בראשותי השקיעו משאבים רבים במגזר הערבי, והתוכנית חסרת התקדים שהממשלה אישרה לפני עשרה ימים תעשה עוד יותר בכיוון זה. An Israeli startup is transforming travel by recreating the common suitcase. You can forget about lugging around a heavy suitcase because NUA Robotics has unveiled robotic luggage that literally follows you around. Suitcase uses Bluetooth technology to sync with your smartphone so that it can locate you and follow along. The case also features an anti-theft alarm and a USB port for charging electronic devices on the go. Plus, it can send real-time data about its location and weight, so that you never have to worry about losing it or accidentally overpacking. NUA unveiled its robotic luggage at the 2016 Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas last week, and it ranked within the top 92% of all of the companies in attendance. The Jerusalem-based company hopes to have the product available to customers by next year. It's time for our Hebrew word of the day. We know how much our viewers love this segment, so we want to get you more involved. If there's a Hebrew word that you'd like to learn, we'd love to teach it to you. All you have to do is like ILTV.TV on Facebook and post your word of choice on the page. If we like your suggestion, we'll mention your name and word during the segment. All right, now let's do today's word. Lizrom. Lizrom literally refers to liquid that flows freely from one place to another, like a wave. Israelis love to use Lizrom in Hebrew slang to refer to the idea of just going with the flow. If an Israeli tells you Lizrom, that Israeli wants you to follow along and be up for anything. So the next time you find yourself outside of your comfort zone, just remember Tizrom. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the weather forecast. It's the beginning of a new week. Monday is expected to be partly cloudy with a high of 67 degrees. The weather should be even sunnier on Tuesday with a high of 68. All right, everybody, that's it for today's news. Today's exchange rate is 3.92 shekels to the American dollar. Remember to sign up for our daily newsletter at ILTV.TV. And don't forget to check out our new breaking newscast every morning at 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow.